In this video, I'm going to cover some of the basics of computing and how computers work as a starter for learning Python. But uh, we won't talk about Python yet. So basically, we know that computers can be programmed. And when we say programmed, uh, we're talking about a sequence of instructions that uh, specifies how to perform a specific computation in the computer. When we say computation, this could be adding two numbers or multiplying two numbers or subtracting some numbers or checking um, a specific um, clause. So a programmer is the person who designs, create, and tests software programs, also known as software developer. So this course is going to provide the foundation for anyone who's interested to become a software programmer. So computers um, are consisted of hardware and software. Uh, when we say hardware, hardware is basically all the physical components of the computer. Um, anything we can see, there are different parts of hardware or different types of hardware uh, in a computer. We have CPU, central processing unit, we have main memory or random access memory. Uh, we have secondary ex storage or external uh, hard drives and we also have input and output um, devices so a combination of hardware and software basically what makes a computer work okay so let's look at different types of hardware in hardware um, and the physical part the okay so let's look at the cpu first so the central processing unit is where all the tasks and on instructions that tell computer what to do come into one place. So basically CPU allows computers to run or execute a program. So this is the main component of a computer. And these pieces used to be pretty big, used to be sizes of rooms. Now as technology evolves, they constantly become smaller and smaller and also become faster and more powerful. So um, again, when we say CPU is more powerful, that means it can run instructions faster and the computer will be faster in speed or in computing. We also have main memory or ran also called that random access memory. This is where computer stores um, all the immediate information, immediate data uh, that is required to run a program. So this is pretty fast and CPU can access data in random access memory pretty quickly. Uh, so we can think of it as a volatile memory, uh, but the issue with RAM is when you um, reset your computer, all the information in that is going to be erased. For instance, let's say we are storing some information. Let's say we uh, copy a chunk of text or an image. The information is typically stored in RAM. So we can paste that information. We don't need to save it. But if we reset that computer, that information is going to be lost. So how does it work? Yeah, so we have main memory, random access memory. That is, these are a set of instructions, usually instead of binary code. So the computer usually works based on a set of zeros and ones. We'll talk about languages and how we turn things into zero and ones. And CPU can actually fetch that data, it will bring uh, that sequence of instructions, it will decode it, it will go through the instructions and the binary numbers uh, in order to perform a, a specific operation. And once it reads that, it decodes that, and it will execute it. So basically that's where we are running a code or performing a specific operation. In computers, we also have secondary storage devices. So RAM is pretty expensive, it's pretty limited. So what we do is that most of the information that we need to keep, um, let's say our files, our programs, our applications, are going to be stored in secondary storage. So this information is not going to be erased when computers are powered up. Um, so we used to have disk drives, these are magnetic drives. Uh, previous generation of computers used to have a lot of these, older technology. Um, there was an issue that sometimes this disk will stop working, or if you drop um, a computer 
uh, there would be damage on it. So now we move to solid state. So they have no moving part. Still as powerful, um, but there's no moving part that can become problematic. We also have flash memory. So it's a portable, physical, um, and, and they're very similar to solid state. So there's no moving parts in them. Um, we're all familiar with that. Another element of hardware is input devices. Input devices are anything we use in order to provide some data to the computer. Uh, the main tools are going to be keyboard and mouse. We also have touch screen. Let's say if you're using an iPad or your phone. Now those are input, main input devices. Um, other things we can think of as scanners, cameras, biosensors, IoT devices, anything that again provide data for the computer. And in the same way we have output devices. Again the main output output device is going to be the display or screen of your phone but we can also think of um, printers speakers lights anything that can be used on an output device for a computer okay so when we work with Python, our goal is to design software. So designing software is basically, and we said software is um, basically the set of instructions that tells computer what to do. There are two main types of software. We have application software. Application software is what we are mostly familiar with. Most people, let's say an average computer user is dealing with application software. These are anything that make computer be useful for businesses, users, think of it as a Microsoft Word, as Photoshop, as Outlook, iTunes. Uh, we can think of all the players we have on our computers, on our phones, even games. These are examples of application software. In addition to that, we also have what's known as system software. System software typically includes um, whatever program that controls and manages the basic operation of a computer. So this is, let's say, a deeper level in computers. Again, most people, unless you're a computer scientist, you don't really deal with system software. So we have operation system. Operation system is the most fundamental set of programs that are run on a computer. We can think of it as a Mac iOS or a Windows base. And these are set the standards for, again, saving, retrieving, information and basically allows a software developer to be able to uh, write a code on top of that we have utility program it is utility program basically performs a specialized task in order to enhance operation of the computer let's say backing up computer or a virtual machine like parallels or antivirus devices um, software and we also have software development tools. Software development tools are something we're going to use in this course. These are um, tools that are computer programs that help us create, modify, and test um, an application. So the elements of a software development will include assemblers, compilers, interpreters. And um, again, some of the tools we're going to use in this course are going to fall into this category, like Jupyter Notebook, we have IntelliJ ID, or IDLE, which is the basic application for running Python code. Another important information is for us to understand the difference between low-level and high-level languages. Um, when we say high-level languages, let's talk about those first. These are the set of languages or computer programming languages that allow us to create complex program. Let's say Python is one example. These are agnostic to the computer architecture and they are portable. So basically we can run this, these languages on any platform. We can run it on Windows, we can run it on Mac, we can run it on Linux. There's no need to know how CPU works. Again, for an average even software developer most likely doesn't have to work with developing a program for CPU. That's very, very complex. It's very interesting, but it's very complex. Um, these high-level languages are more simple to understand, more uh, intuitive to understand. Examples like Python, Java, uh, C++, 
and also we have low level languages so low level languages are closer to the language of the machine basically the language that's being used to program different hardware pieces of the computer these are not portable there's no abstraction and uh, you basically are going to tell computer exactly what to do again some of these languages you might have heard of fortran or c but they're older they're very complex and again most likely it's something that um, even an average software developer doesn't have to worry about so we're mostly dealing with high level languages let's say it's an example of a code the first simple code we write like print hello world it's an example of a code we write it's a high level language code um the last topic that i want to discuss um, before we get to how to design a program is basically the difference between interpreter and a compiler so the statement that a programmer writes in a high level language are usually called the source code okay so typically the programmer types program code in a text editor and saves the code in a file on a computer and next thing we want to do we can there are two ways to run this code one is through compiler and one is using an interpreter the difference is that a compiler will run the whole code all at once so it will go through the code and it will run everything so because of this compiler might take a little bit to compile the file python is actually example example of an application that compiles the code so it will go through the whole code and if it finds no error it will give us it will have an executed file this is an example of how it looks like so we have all our code it goes to the compiler it turns into the machine language program we said a combination of zeros and ones and then that's going to be it, like it reads everything and it compiles everything and that's going to be ready for cpu to to kick in however an interpreter what it does is that it goes through the text and instructions one line at a time so what it does is that it basically goes through and checks the code once at a time so in compiler if there's a syntax error we're going to go through a lot of syntax errors in this course probably any kind of mistakes we do let's say missing a punctuation missing a character or a variable that's not properly defined when we get an error that code is not going to execute but for a compiler for an interpreter if there is an error in one line the code will go through all the instructions and it will run whatever that's good and once it goes to the line that um, has an error it will just create an error for that line so basically interpreter is a lot faster because it just starts running the code right away as you write it however um, compiler once the code is compiled the execu execution is going to be a lot faster again some of these concepts are going to make more sense as we go throughout this program but i want you guys to know some of the basics again it's an example like print and so forth interpreters goes through and again goes through one by one and it's going to be executed by the cpu so that is a quick overview of let's say how computer programs work now in the next set of videos 